Hello everyone, this is General Hand Grenade. Welcome to my war room in Prince George, British Columbia. In this video, we're going to explore the units that you get in the Global War 2025 Meltdown game. Uh, we're going to take a pretty close look at, at each one, how, how it moves, how much it costs, attack, defense, you know, how to use it. Um, not going to go into a lot of combat and things like that. Just, uh, just basic unit profile stuff. So um, let's get started. Okay, so I've kind of set it up so that we can get close-ups of these things, uh, so that you can see the units uh, pretty close up, rather than just a ways back and set on the board. So the first thing is the infantry. Now. Um, this doesn't just represent a foot soldier type of thing, right? Like uh, these are our basic units. So uh, when you see um, um, an infantry marker down there, it actually is a whole infantry unit. So, you know, the things that um, in the modern world that, that would take to the, to move them, right? Um, like um, uh, personnel carriers and, and things like that, right? So um, they're slightly different than what you're used to for an infantry unit for that reason, because they're modern, right? Um, but, but there's some things that are the same, like their attack is two, their defense is four, and the cost is three. So that's all the same. And when you're moving them into combat, then you would move them one space, right? But if you haven't moved them into combat, and if you haven't used them for combat on your turn, then they can actually move two spaces. And that represents, you know, the ease with which uh, we transport um, infantry units in today's world versus World War II or, or earlier, right? Uh, so anyway, that's, that's uh, the, the one difference with the infantry sculpt is that two on what we would think of as non-combat movement, but in this game is called strategic movement. Um, and then you have these airborne chips so if you put these guys on an airborne ship then they become airborne now oh i should have mentioned that uh, the sculpts that we're using so the one that i just put the uh, the under the air uh, the airborne ship under that's a caliphate soldier and all of the caliphate units in this game are 3d printed because doug wanted to make them unique like they were they really weren't uh like <laughs> chinese or, or russian units right they they kind of had their own Thing going so that's a caliphate soldier but then you see the russian soldier right beside him there that's an actual russian soldier and you the chinese guy is the same thing as that except for red and then the american there that you see uh it is an american soldier and the pacific coalition and nato also have the same sculpt as that one just uh different colors right so anyway uh with the airborne there um, their numbers are, are slightly different, so they uh, they attack at two again, but they only defend at one. And uh, movement, if you were just walking them, then they would move one as well, just like a regular infantry. But if you use them as an airborne unit, you don't use a plane in this game to get them there. You would just fly them from an air base, right? And so everybody on the board, um, except for the Americans, would uh, the airborne would move three spaces and with the Americans it's four spaces that's their special ability is their their range basically for lack of better way to put it right now but uh, all the logistical things are better for the Americans and that's their special ability everybody in the game has a special ability uh, for instance NATO um, combat usually lasts three rounds but if you're attacking into a NATO country then it's only two rounds that you can attack for, right? And everybody's got a, uh, a different ability like that. Anyway, um, with the airborne there, uh, yeah, like you can move three spaces for everybody and, and four for the American. Uh, you can't fly over a uh, land or a sea zone that contains an enemy fighter, uh, including that are on the carriers or the LHDs, we'll get to those later, or neutral land zones. Like you can't fly planes over a neutral land zone. Similarly, you can't fly these airborne over a neutral land zone because technically they would be on an airplane, right? None of these guys actually know how to fly. Anyway, let's move on to the next unit. The next unit on our list is the MBT or main battle tank. You'll find in the rules that it's usually just listed as MBT uh, just for brevity, right? 
But, um, oh, you know, before I get into that, uh, I said that was a Russian soldier before. It's actually a Chinese soldier. My apologies. Anyway, so these tanks uh, specifically are, hang on, I had it here. Um, so that's an M1A3 main battle tank, that blue one there. That would be the Abrams tank, right? The American tank. So the next one, uh, the red one there uh, in the Chinese colors, that's a Type 99 main battle tank. And the Caliphate one in black is a Karar main battle tank, and that's from Iran. Um, so how these things work, so um, they attack at six and they defend at six. They can move two and they cost six as well. Now they have a target selection of one and, they, and that's against land units. And there's only two kinds of land units and that's the main battle tank and the infantry. Uh, I guess you could say the airborne as well, but anyway, so you, if you had your choice, you would probably choose to take out a tank on the other side if you were to roll a one with your tank. Uh, and combat is a little different in this game. Like you kind of, you, you roll all your units separately, right? Uh, for like first you roll the, the first strike units and then you remove those casualties and they don't get to shoot back, right? Um, unless they were first strike as well. Then you go to your units that have um, uh, target selection because if, if that unit is, is uh, taken, then you remove it from the board immediately. It's going to get a shot back, but um, it's just a, the order of combat, the way you do it in, in this game. It's a, it's a bit different from the other game. Um, and so, you know, like you would, uh, after the round with everybody that rolled their con or target selection units, and there's more than just the tank that has the target selection. Uh, there's some of the ordnance as well. Then, um, then you move on to the other units in your roll, and and then you would, uh, you know, at the end of the round, then you would remove all of the casualties and start over again, right? Except for, um, I don't think that there's first strike again. I'm pretty sure there isn't, but <laughs> again, I'm not an expert at this game yet. So um, that's the way it kind of works. But um, anyway, the the target selection actually means something in this. Uh, also the fighters and the attack helicopters and the frigates uh, as far as regular units that don't have ordnance they also have target selection as well uh, the other thing is uh, about the main battle tank is that it is uh, it has a blitz ability now the blitz ability is slightly different in this game as well so combat normally lasts three rounds i think i just mentioned that a minute ago except for if you're fighting into a nato territory then that's two rounds um, so what happens is, uh, like, let's say you take something out in the first round uh, and you only got one space with your tank. Well, you still got one more space you can go for one thing, so you could move it into the next territory. But you've already used one of your um, one of your uh, rounds of combat, right? So now you've only got two rounds of combat left. And if you had attacked into a NATO country on your second one, then you only have one round of combat left. So yes, you can blitz, but uh, the total of the rounds of combat that you can use that main battle tank for in that turn is still only three or two against NATO, right? Um, anyway, so that's basically the, uh, the main battle tank. They're a pretty good unit in this game. Okay, so there is your fighter. Fighters are a good unit in this game. They're one of the most powerful as they are in, <laughs> in today's world, right? Like uh, they're, they're something else uh, the way they are now. Anyway, um, attack and defense, both six. Uh, they move four and they cost 12 in this game. So uh, pretty big expense, but again, um, very useful in this game. So aside from regular combat where they would attack and defend at six, they also have surgical strikes. So like they can move into a territory and do a surgical strike against the units there at half their combat value. So basically they're rolling at threes, right? And unless there's any fighters in that territory, um, then they, they, they just go in, they shoot, then they leave, right? And uh, also base strike. So they can go in and attack a base like an air base or um, I'm not sure what they call those things, if they're factories or what they are. Uh, there's naval bases. So they can go in and, and they can do base strikes. Oh, it's just it's just naval and air bases, and it's only one round. And so these units, they also have uh, target selection. 
Um, and their target selection is, again, it looks like one. Uh, against anything except for an attack submarine. So the third thing that they can do uh, is interception. Uh, so when somebody's doing a surgical strike or a base strike, then you can uh, send up your fighters if they're in that territory and they can um, do a round of interception combat. So basically all the fighters will roll at half their value, which means uh, at a three, right? So they'll all roll and then once that's over, then if the fighter survives the attacking fighter, then he goes in there and does his business, then he leaves, right? <laughs> it's, it's that simple. Now, as far as what those fighters are, the the blue one that you see there, that's the F-35 jet fighter. Uh, what do we got there, a Russian one? That's a J-31 jet fighter. And the, the Caliphate one, I can't pronounce this word, I don't think, it's Sahay jet fighter and that's an Iranian fighter. So that's what those units are. And I don't think there's much else to say about them. They're pretty complicated though. Like, I mean, you'll want to read the rules for sure to, to get more in depth on them. And you can go look at Admiral Seabass's videos. He showed some of the things that, that I'm talking about here as far as base strikes and uh, surgical strikes in combat. Anyway, so let's move on to the next unit. These are called attack helicopters. So I'll just read what it says right out of the book here because it actually is, it says it a lot better than I would. It says attack helicopters represent variety of different helicopter types. In land operations, an attack helicopter would represent a mix air cavalry backed by heavily armed attack helicopters for fire support. In naval operations, the attack helicopter would represent helicopters used for anti-submarine warfare. Helicopters can land in a land zone conquered this turn and can capture land zones. The attack helicopter is one of two units that can attack an attack submarine. They do so at half their attack value, so you would roll at a two, because normally their attack and defense is four, and their movement is four, and they cost eight IPP. So what you're looking at there for the unit types uh, that's a AH-64 Apache attack helicopter on the left there. That's from the Pacific Coalition, although I believe that's an American helicopter, right? And the next one there is a WZ-10 attack helicopter. Uh, that's the Russian one there. And then the Caliphate, it's a T-129 attack helicopter, and that is from Turkey. So that is how... Oh, and they do have... Um, first strike and that's against main battle tanks so you could choose a main battle tank as a casualty rather than the other guy choosing an infantry right these things <laughs> these innocent looking little things are not so innocent they are uh, extremely powerful I mean just for instance like the, the fighters cost of 12 these things cost 16 IPP so their cost is way up there. They even cost more than a super carrier does. Um, that's because they're extremely powerful. So just regular combat, their attack and defense is eight and their movement is two. And like I said, cost is 16. But the thing about these things is, is they also fire uh, the different kinds of ordnance, right? Um, so they've got anti-ship, anti-air, <laughs> anti-submarine armaments. Um, they can fire regular and nuclear cruise missiles like they're they're really powerful and you'll see once we get into the ordnance here later in the video that there's all kinds of different types of missiles and everything and this is one of the things that you would sh use to shoot them from right uh, so extremely powerful these uh, these things and their call sign is a DDG I don't know how they get DDG out of that what the DDG stands for uh, I'm sure somebody can can chime in on that but anyway that's what they're referred to as okay I can't believe I forgot to tell you what those were so the uh, blue one there the NATO one is uh, an, it's called the Arleigh Burke destroyer the Chinese one there would be the type 055 destroyer and the caliphate one would be Visak I don't know how to say that <laughs> and it's from INS does anybody know what INS means but anyway that's uh, 
that's what that one is. Visakhapatnam. Huh. Don't really know how to pronounce that. Anyway, that's what those are. All right, then. Let's get the name of these ones out of the way right away, just so I don't forget them again. So the American one there, that's the Independence Class Frigate. Uh, the next one over is a Type 054A Frigate. And then the Caliphate one. Let's see if they got a better name. Oh, yeah. Al Riyadh Frigate. I can pronounce that one. Yay. Okay, so frigates. Uh, so they represent smaller naval vessels designed to perform fleet anti-aircraft defense, anti-submarine warfare, and other duties. The frigate is one of only two units that can attack an attack submarine, uh, the other one being the attack helicopters, right? And uh, they do so at half their attack value. So normally their attack and defense value is a four, and they move to, and they cost eight. So that's half the price of those destroyers, right? Uh, but if you were attacking a sub with them, then they would attack it at two. And it also has um, target selection and of uh, one, and that is against the attack subs, right? Yeah, that's your frigate. Okay, so these are your super carriers. And the types that you're looking at there, the, the yellow one there for the Pacific Coalition, that's a, an American carrier. That's the Ford class carrier, as in Gerald Ford. Um, the Chinese one is the Type 001 carrier. The Caliphate one, what are they using? Uh, it was a tanker that was converted into a carrier. That's probably why it looks so weird. Um, you can see it's got some scratches on the top of that one. I'm going to repaint my uh, Caliphate units um, because I, I just want to. <laughs> I, might, I might end up painting all the units in the game. But anyway, uh, so what do these things do? Well, um, let's just get to the stats first. They don't have an attack value. They have defense of only two. They move two, and they cost 15. Uh, but that's not the real value in them, the fighting with them, right? Um, although they will defend themselves. So they represent carrier groups with 200 to 300 modern combat aircraft. Each supercarrier may carry two fighters or attack helicopters, or one of each, and one drone. So you could put three things on there. It may carry an additional drone in place of an aircraft. So you could have two drones and a fighter if you wanted. Uh, it takes two hits to kill. Um, after the first hit, you mark the carrier with a damage marker. The damage marker does not affect the carrier or the aircraft on it. Carrier aircraft must always land on their own faction's carriers. I wonder if that means they can't land on land. I'm, I'm going to have to find that out. And undamaged super carriers may scramble fighters to an adjacent land or sea battle as if they were at an airbase. I'm not sure if I mentioned that with the fighters. They do have the scrambling ability. But if they're on land, then they can only scramble to the sea. They can't scramble to the next land zone, and that's from an airbase, right? But when they're on a carrier, they can scramble to the adjacent land or sea battle. So uh, that makes the carrier-based aircraft pretty valuable. Um, and that's about all there is to say about those, really. So these things are a unit that uh, we're unfamiliar with in, in the Global War universe until now. This is uh, something that is, what did, just didn't exist before. This is called an LHD, or a landing helicopter dock. So it was designed to transport military units in an amphibious assault. The LHD represents an amphibious warfare group consisting of a variety of ships, the largest and most powerful, which are the LHDs. The LHD may carry two land units of any type and one fighter or attack helicopter, plus one drone. It may carry a second drone in place of an aircraft. Land units may load onto the LHD in combat orders or strategic moving phase, so long as they have not moved prior to loading. They may then be unloaded after the LHD moves, the units that are on the LHD could unload in different land zones if both were adjacent to the LHD. However, once one of the units unloads, the LHD can't uh, move anymore. So that's like your your naval transport in the 36 game, right? Once you drop things off, you can't move it anymore. So it's not required to move. Uh, it could be like a bridge if you were, you know, in the same. Uh, two territories separated just by uh, sea zone 
uh, so it doesn't have to move, right? Um, it can't transport units or host aircraft or drones that are not from its faction. If an LHD is destroyed during a battle, all land units on it are eliminated. Land units on an LHD never participate in naval, naval combat and can't be selected separately as casualties. LHDs are combat units. Um, they do not have to be chosen last in combat and they do not block movement of enemy ships. So the numbers on the LHD, so there's no attack value. There's a one for defense. Uh, it moves to and it costs 10. So like you can see there, the Russian one, I've got a helicopter sitting on there and I've got two Russian units sitting beside it. Uh, you could also put a drone on there as, as well, right? Or two drones without a helicopter or a fighter instead of a helicopter, you know. <laughs> they're uh, they're like kicked up transports that we're not used to, but those are those are the naval transports in this game. Uh, so the the types that you're looking at there, the American one is the America class LHD. Um, the Russian one is the Type 075 LHD, and the Caliphate one is the Mistral class LHD, and it is from Egypt. So that's your LHD. These are your attack submarines. Um, so like uh, the 36 game submarines, play by a different set of rules than the rest of the ships in the game, right? Um, as you would expect, right? So let's first, let's just identify those ones there. Uh, what do we got there? That's the SSN Virginia attack sub, uh, but that's the Pacific uh, Coalition's version in, in their colors and uh, type 093 attack sub is the Chinese one there in the caliphate um, That's a FATA Attack sub and it's from Iran and as you can see I also have a silent running chip there So we'll get into that right now uh, The numbers for attack submarines attack for defense for movement two, and uh, cost of 10 so um so they have stealth now that they can move through zones where you, you've got ships in them. Um, your ships do not stop the movement of submarines and that's whether they're moving into combat or, or moving afterwards in uh, what is that the strategic movement phase. Um, they can just move around at will. Uh, there's also silent running so that nobody could um, attack them I don't think. Um, and, but you have to do that at a certain part, part, part of your turn. So I'm not going to get right into them. It'd take forever to do this video if I told you everything that a sub could do. But let's just look at the kind of combats it can do. So uh, it can be attacked by helicopters or frigates for half their normal value. We talked about that earlier. Um, and any unit can defend against a sub if the sub decides to attack it, right? Uh, cruise missile. Uh, attack submarines may fire regular and nuclear cruise missiles. It has first strike, so it uh, so you would remove the casualties right away if, if they got hit by an attack submarine. Um, it can submerge, so it could um, uh, just like the submarines in the earlier game. There, it could uh, make an attack, and then the other guys would defend. Uh, and then the second round they could decide, you know what, I'm not going to make an attack. This guy's just going to submerge so he's no longer part of that battle. Even if there still is a battle with other units going on. And it can't cause casualties to air. So subs are pretty powerful, especially since you can use the ordnance with them, right? Do the, the different kinds of attacks. And yeah, like there's more, a little bit more to them, but that's basically it for attack submarines. There's other kind of submarines. Let's just do those as well. So the, you've got these chips here, um, ballistic submarines. Can you see that in there? Let me just get that up in there. There we go. So ballistic submarines, and they're a little bit different. So obviously they don't have different types of sculpts for these. Um, uh, maybe in the future we might see some coming. But um, each faction, except the Caliphate, has at least one of these on the board um, or markers. Um, and I think that uh, the Pacific Coalition only has one, but everybody else has more than one on the board. So what they do is they can fire the SLBMs and what those are, sub-launch ballistic missile. And uh, 
those can be some pretty devastating. We'll get into the different types of ordnance coming up here next, actually. Um, but anyway, they, they can fire those things, right? They move two spaces. They ignored for all purposes and never block movement or interact with other units, except if they're being hunted and they can only be hunted by the attack submarines. So only attack submarines may attack ballistic missile submarines. They only hit on a one. Combat lasts one round only. If a ballistic missile submarine is eliminated, remove one SLBM from that player's missile arsenal. The ballistic missile submarine has no defense role. So there you go. Uh, they're, they're kind of vulnerable, but again, it's a, it's attack at one, so it's tough to hit them. Um, and that's your ballistic missile submarine. So the last thing we're going to look at is the ordnance and uh, there's uh, the other chip there, the drone. So that's not really ordnance. What a drone is, it's um, like it, it has got no attack and defense value. Um, what it is, is you pair that chip with a unit. Uh, so like you could put your main ta battle tank on that chip, just one of them. Um, they only pair one to one and you can only have one per, per faction or sorry, one per uh, alliance in each battle. So there are most drones that you would see in a, in a single battle would be two drones, one for the attacker, one for the defender, right? And that chip would allow the unit that is paired with it to roll two dice. Uh, you wouldn't use the results of both dice, you would just pick the best one. So like if you were using your main battle tank and you got a hit on one dice and, and uh, no hit on the other, then you would take the one that, that did the hit. Uh, and then if, if you got both of them were a hit, but one of them was a targeted selection, then you would choose the targeted selection on that dice, right? So that's what a drone does. It moves two and it costs three to purchase drones. And you can move them, we talked about it earlier when we talked about the LHDs and the super carriers, you can move them on the super, on, on those ships as well, right? So uh, let's get into the ordnance then. And that's when we start getting into the nuclear weapons. And this is one thing that is optional in the game, uh, the nuclear part of the game. But I mean, why would you buy this game if you weren't, if you weren't gonna play with the nuclear weapons, right? Uh, you might as well go play Risk. <laughs> hey, I'm not judging you, but uh, anyway, so there's two two different kinds. There's onboard weapons and there's offboard weapons. So the onboard weapons are ones that you would find that uh, that were already on the board, like they're in territories, right? Uh, like your ICBMs and and stuff like that. Um, those are onboard weapons. And then the offboard weapons are the ones that you find in your dashboard. Like we've gone over that before. There's dashboards and there's a bunch of chips on your dashboard and that's basically your arsenal and it's kept off board right uh, and you can just use those at any time so uh, like the onboard weapons they're ICBMs that's uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles there's your IRBM that's intermediate range ballistic missile so basically the same thing but doesn't go as far right and then you see the small one there beside the drone chip that's called an ADM that's atomic demolitions munition munition so this weapon is placed in Israel and may be detonated in response to an attack. It does not trigger first use penalties or leave a nuclear blast. It does not have first strike. So basically you use it like a, like a, a fortification except that it's not first strike, right? You roll three dice and uh, it defends at five. So if somebody wants to attack Israel, you just basically you roll three dice and and um, see if you can kill anybody with that. Just gives you a little bit of extra protection, protection for Israel. But Israel is the only place that has that, that particular chip in it. So let's get into some of the other ones. So like a, an ICBM has a range of eight. The IRBM has a range of four. The SLBM, which is a submarine launch ballistic missile, has a range of six. A nuclear cruise missile has a range of only one. So basically, uh, you could use it with an attack submarine, a guided missile destroyer, or an air base, right? And you would fire a nuke, but you would only go one territory with it. Um, and is that all the chips that are there? Yeah, that, that's right, yep. So that's what those chips are. And um, so in general, the, the nuclear game, um, let me just read what it says here, the, uh, the, the general effects of the nuclear war. So one, the attacking player fires a nuclear weapon at a land zone within range. 
the weapon hits automatically unless the opponent has ABM technology. I'm not going to get into that today, but <laughs> let's just say there's a way you can stop it, right? So you place the nuclear blast marker in the zone. A faction can use more than one nuclear weapon on a zone, but never places more than one blast marker. The attacking player rolls one six-sided die, and you add plus two to this for an IBM, or sorry, ICBM, and plus one for an SLBM. Remove that many units from the land zone. So whatever you roll plus that that number. Um, on the turn, a nuclear blast marker is placed, and as long as it remains in the zone, no units may move into or out of that zone. Uh, aircraft can still fly over the zone, though. And if a canal uses that zone, like uh, on the canals, uh, you have to have both. If, a, if there's a canal that goes through that zone, like the Panama Canal, then you can't use the canal while the, while the marker is on Panama, basically, right? The player who owns the territory removes the nuclear blast marker at the start of their end of turn phase and thus collects income from the territory and can place units there. So basically, like uh, say somebody uh, used a, a, a nuclear strike against you, well, you know, whatever happens, happens. Now it's your turn. You go through all of your turn, nobody moves into or out of. Uh, so basically whatever units and bases and everything that are in there um, are basically of no use until the beginning of, of the last part of your turn and then um, then you remove the blast marker and uh, you can place units there, right? Um, you can still fire nuclear weapons, crews, and anti-ship ballistic missiles out of a zone with a nuclear blast marker. So there you go. Um, I don't think I have an ASBM there. Those are limited in the game. I think China has them. I'm not sure who else has them, but I know China does. So those are anti-ship ballistic missiles. But uh, I've everybody has their own special uh, ability in China is they have those anti-ship ballistic missiles so so you can also do a base that's a general effect but there's also the base strike the nuclear weapon can be used to target an air or naval base place a damage marker on the base it does not affect other units in the zone but it is not removed until the player pays to remove it so you'd have to pay to undamage your base a naval strike. Uh, nuclear crews can be fired at surface ships and hits on a seven plus or seven or more and chooses its target automatically. A unit hit by a nuclear cruise missile is eliminated as are all land units, aircraft and drones on it. A super carrier would not take damage. Huh. Nuclear cruise missiles do not leave a blast marker in C zones. So basically it dissipates. It's, it doesn't take that C zone out of commission. Anyway, I think that's it for the units in this game. I think I covered them all. If I didn't, oh well. <laughs> anyway, let's just move this over here again. There we go. I think we can zoom out again, a bit again. There we go. So anyway, that's the end of this video. That's, that's the units that you're going to find in this game. And uh, there will be more videos coming this week. And hopefully there will be some gameplay next weekend between me and Panzer King and I'm looking forward to that looking forward to actually playing this game hopefully I will have taught myself how to play by then anyway take care everyone General Hand Grenade out